Good morning. Good day. Happy Father's Day. This morning, as I think about the message, I think about the love that fathers have for their kids. And I hope you can uh, remember and rejoice in that love if your father has passed, like mine has. If your father is still around, I hope you can uh, say to him today that you appreciate what he has done for you. Father's Day is not about dads being perfect. Father's Day is about appreciating them for all that they do for us. If you're a man and you are not a father, think today on those people that you have helped in their lives, who you've been buddies with, who maybe you have been a father to in some ways, and be happy that you've had those opportunities. Or perhaps it's an idea to seek those opportunities out so that you'll have the experience of helping, shepherding, guiding some kids, some people along the way. I remember when I uh, asked my dad many years ago, well, Father's Day is coming up. You have any tips for me? And my dad said, well, keep it short. So today, I'll be brief. I know you're laughing. You're thinking, ah, that'll never happen. But I'm going to try. And we're going to look at the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at the 13th chapter, which is called the love chapter. And I'm going to uh, speak or preach expositorily. And expository preaching means that I'm going to go to the text and read it, and then I'm going to talk about it. And I'll go back to the text and read a few verses and talk about it. So I'm exposing the scripture to light and seeing what we find there. So I'm going to start at the beginning of chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, and I'm reading from the New International Version. If I speak in the tongue of men and angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Well, Paul was writing about love in this chapter. We know that. That's obvious. It was a poem, perhaps a hymn, and he's trying to express here that love is what Christ gave to us, each of us. Christ gave his love to us through himself. He gave himself in love to us. And we're to return that love to others, or at least try. That's why this is a great Father's Day message. Try. Try to love. Try to help. So this first verse helps us think about love, helps us think about love and not love. And if you don't have the love of Christ, if you don't have that love, then what you say and what you do rings a bit empty at times because there's not a basis behind it, not a reason for it, not a depth of understanding that makes you go in a certain way, that propels you towards love and helping. Paul says, in verse 2, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mystery and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Wow. You can have all sorts of gifts. You can have faith that moves mountains of all things. But if you don't have love in your hearts, if you aren't sharing love with others, you're nothing. You can be as smart as possible. You can be educated to help. You can have worldly knowledge and experience that has helped you in life. But if you don't love yourself, your neighbors, and everybody else, you're nothing. That's what Paul is saying. We don't want to be nothing. We want to be everything. We want to be a good person. We want to be a person known for loving each other. I think as I look back in my life of people who have passed away, sure, sometimes I remember their brilliant deeds, their wonderful scholarship, 
their amazing acts of heroism. But I think more than anything, what I remember about people is how they loved me and showed love to others. So if you want to be great in life and remembered well, that might be the key to love. Well, if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Paul's saying, if you give every single thing you have, but you don't give it in love, it doesn't mean that much. But when we give money, stuff, energy, time, effort, when we give it with love, it means everything. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Paul gives us a list of things that love is. Having said that if we do things without love, we're nothing. He builds us up by telling us what love is and what we need to do and how we need to learn to love as Christ does. It is not rude. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love hopes all things. Christ showed us this when he had hopes for those fishermen he called to be disciples. For Mary Magdalene when he brought her alongside him as a, one of the women disciples who followed him. Christ has hope for me, for you for each of us. I'm indebted to my Uncle Barney for this line of thinking about 1 Corinthians 13. Uncle Barney was a pastor for part of his career and passed away earlier this year. I know I've mentioned him before, but sometimes when I look over his old sermon notes from 50, 60 years ago, it makes me laugh. And he says right here in his notes about this passage that Christ loves us all and hopes for us all and hopes for us all in the future. Uncle Barney says he didn't have much to work with. That's Uncle Barney humor. Saying that Christ takes us wherever we are, however we are, and builds us up, helps us, sustains us, encourages us. You don't have to be a certain way. You don't have to be good in your own mind. You don't have to be aiming for perfection even. You just have to be trying to love. And Christ is working with us, hoping for us, enduring with us. Also, love always perseveres. It endures. It keeps going. You see in the news and you hear reports of moms and grandmas who knew that kid would be found who is missing, who knew this person would finally turn over a good leaf and come to the Lord. People who pray for years and years for family members and loved ones. People who work for justice and march for peace continually throughout their lives, risking their lives even. For love, it perseveres, it endures. I admire those people who spend their lives in the service of a cause with love for Christ. Love never fails kind of a benediction in the Bible as you read chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians you'll see that it runs on the chapter goes on but if I was the one who was making the starts and stops 
I'd make a new paragraph after the words, love never fails. Now you may think, you may be watching this, you may be hearing this, you may say, yeah, love does fail. And that's true. Love does fail sometimes among humans. Marriages end, even if it's not what we had in mind. Boyfriends and girlfriends split up. It happens all the time. Significant others say, this is where I leave and end a relationship. Sometimes we have to practice strong love and set boundaries for family members who might overstep what is comfortable and overask for what they know we can't give them. Sometimes it's appropriate to set those boundaries in love. Sometimes people may feel that we fail them when we try to love them or that we aren't trying hard enough to love them. Others may feel that our love has failed and we may feel that the love others have for us has failed. It goes both ways. But the love that Christ has for us never fails. It's always enduring, always hoping, always persevering. Christ's love suffers for us. It suffered so much for us that Jesus was willing to die on a cross to prove to us God's love and his love that it will never fail. Christ's death on the cross was a promise to us that he sacrificed himself so that we might be made sinless if we believe in him and his love for us. Christ was strong enough to suffer for us in love. Christ was strong enough to love each of us and that that love will never fail is such an important thing for us each to remember. The greatest qualities of love are those qualities that Jesus had of loving people, of helping people, of sharing his life and of giving his life for others. Few of us are called to give our life, but we are all called to give our hearts, to give our love to the world, to our family, to our Christian brothers and sisters, and to ourselves as we seek to follow our Lord Jesus Christ and his love that never fails, that is for all of us. Have a great day. Have a great week. Again, happy Father's Day. And God bless you. At the bottom of this video, in the notes on YouTube, I'm going to put a link for my friend, Reverend Greg McCollum. He recently retired from Walnut Hills Baptist Church in Cincinnati. He's been a great friend and colleague of mine for many years. And he has started a podcast. They are wonderful devotionals. That's what I would call them. And they really help you think about the little things in life that help us get closer to God. That's his theme. He's got six podcasts already and out there, maybe more by now. And I'm going to put a link to his podcast so that you might use that as an opportunity for a midweek devotional or an opportunity to reflect on some of the small but important things in our lives as those who follow Christ, who believe in God, and who are working on increasing our love to the world. Take care. Bye-bye.